In this video, we're going to cover Le Chatelier's principle. This is a topic that is often tested on the MCAT, so you want to pay extra attention to this video. So first of all, Le Chatelier's principle states that a reaction at equilibrium, when stressed, will shift in a direction to minimize that stress. Now, several things. Number one, this only works for reactions at equilibrium, which means if your reaction isn't at equilibrium, if you introduce a stress, the reaction isn't necessarily going to shift in the direction that you would predict based on Le Chatelier's principle. So again, very important to make sure that your reaction is at equilibrium before you're considering these concepts we're going to discuss. The next thing is, what do we mean by a stress? Well, there are several different types of stresses we can introduce in a reaction, and these include changes in the concentrations of the reactants or products, changes to the pressure or volume, and changes to the temperature of the system. And finally, the last part is the reaction will shift in order to minimize that stress. So what we mean by that is the reaction will either shift to the left, so it will proceed in the reverse direction, or it will shift to the right and proceed in the forward direction. So the best way to understand how Le Chatelier's principle is actually to take a look at an example. So here, we have this reaction on the bottom, water plus carbon gives us hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. And the situation is, we're adding 10 moles of carbon monoxide, 10 moles of hydrogen, 10 moles of carbon, and one mole of water to a one liter container. If the equilibrium constant is 100 at 25 degrees Celsius, is this reaction at equilibrium? All right, so if we wanna figure out if our reaction has equilibrium, that just means we need to figure out if the reaction quotient Q is equal to K, which in other words is asking, is the current ratio of products to reactants the same as that at equilibrium? So to write out the expression for Q, it's products over reactants, excluding solids or liquids, and stoichiometric coefficients become exponents. So over here, this is going to be our expression for Q, products over reactants, and of course we've ignored carbon because carbon is a solid and is not included in the expression for Q or K. So now to calculate the value of Q, we need to plug in the concentrations of each of these. So for hydrogen, we have 10 moles of hydrogen in a one liter container, so the concentration is 10 molar. For carbon monoxide, we also have 10 moles in one liter, so that's 100. And for water, we have one mole in one liter, so that will give us one, which 10 times 10 over one gives us 100. So in response to this question, yes, our reaction is at equilibrium. Now, here's where you do need to be a little careful for the MCAT. Some students might forget that carbon should not be included in the reaction quotient expression. And you'll note that if you had included carbon in the denominator and plugged in the concentration of carbon using these values, you would have gotten a different value for Q and you would not have concluded that Q is equal to K and that the reaction is at equilibrium. Okay, so this is going to be our starting situation. We have a reaction at equilibrium, which means we can apply the Le Chatelier's principle. So let's start introducing stresses. Our first stress is we want to know what happens if two moles of carbon monoxide is added. So some of you might recall, hey, if you're changing the amount of reactants or products, you look at the reaction, and if it's carbon monoxide, well, that's a product. So if you add product, then now you have too much product, so your reaction is gonna shift to the left. Now, that is correct. In this case, our reaction is going to shift to the left. However, let's take a look at our second case, and B, if instead of adding two moles of carbon monoxide, we added two moles of carbon, well, using the same reasoning, you might say, oh, hey, if I add carbon, that's a reactant. So since I'm adding a reactant, my reaction shifts to the right. And in this case, that doesn't happen. There is no shift. 
right? So here's where you have to be a little careful about the chemistry. It's not always add reactants, shift right, add products, shift left, right? It's a little bit more complicated than that. So how can we explain why in one case when we added a compound there was a shift and in the other case when we added a compound there is no shift? Well, when you add carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is in our expression of Q. So when you add carbon monoxide, this increases the value of Q. And if you increase the value of Q, now Q is greater than K. And if Q is greater than K, then our reaction shifts to the left to reduce Q back to the value of K. So that works. How about this case? If we add two moles of carbon, well, notably, carbon is a solid. It's not included in our expression of Q. So as a result, there is no change in Q. And if there is no change in Q, Q is equal to K. So our reaction is still at equilibrium. And if it's at equilibrium, there's no reason for our reaction to shift. So that's why we have these two results here. And the main idea here is if you want to induce a shift by the Les Chatelier's principle, Q cannot be equal to K. If they're equal to K, you're at equilibrium, no shift. Okay, so now what if we were to double the pressure by decreasing the volume to half of a liter? All right, now again, some of you might recall learning from your chemistry courses. Hey, if we increase the pressure, our system is gonna shift in the direction where you have fewer moles of gas. So you can look in this direction and think, oh hey, I have one moles of gas in our reactants and two moles of gas in my products. So therefore, our reaction is going to shift to the left. And in this case, that's correct. Here you increase the pressure, your reaction shifted to the side with fewer moles of gas. However, again, let's take a look at another situation. Here, we're going to double the pressure by adding argon gas to the system. Again, we're increasing the pressure. However, in this situation, when you increase the pressure by adding argon gas, there is no shift. So again, we have to be pretty careful here when we're looking at Les Chatelier's principle. It's not always so simple. So let's start in this case. Why do we have a shift? Well, if we have a shift, that means something has happened such that Q is no longer equal to K. So one of the safe ways to do that is, well, let's go ahead and calculate the value of Q, all right? The initial value for Q that we had was 100. This is the value that we had solved for. Q initial was 100. So now if we introduce this change, if we want to calculate the final value of Q, it's still the same expression for Q. It's going to be hydrogen, carbon monoxide over water. Now, have these values changed? Well, in this case, when we changed the volume, we didn't change the amount of any of these three, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and water. We still have 10 moles each of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, and one mole of water. However, concentration is calculated as moles per volume. And when you decrease the volume to half a liter, now for hydrogen, instead of 10 moles in one liter, you now have 10 moles in half a liter, which is a concentration of 20 molar. So effectively, by decreasing the volume to half a liter, we double the concentrations of all these species. So, this is 20, uh, carbon monoxide is also 20, and water is 2. Now, when you double these values and you now calculate the value of Q, now you can see that the value of Q is 400 divided by 2, which is 200. So as we go from Q initial to Q final, what we can see is that you have increased the value of Q. And this value of Q of 200 is now greater than KQ of 100. So that would mean that Q is greater than K, so the reaction is going to shift to the left to try to reduce the value of Q. 
So that explains why we have this shift here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at D. Why is there no shift? Well, the reason why there is no shift when you're looking at argon gas is because argon is a noble gas and the noble gases generally are inert. They do not participate in chemical reactions. So that means when you add argon gas to this reaction, argon is going to be a reactant and argon is also going to be a product. It just does not react. So when you look at your expression for Q, well first let's rewrite the expression with argon. So we have argon gas plus water plus carbon solid forms carbon monoxide plus hydrogen plus argon gas. All right, argon is both a reactant and a product because argon does not participate in the reaction. So when we write our expression for Q, you're going to have products over reactants, so that's going to give us carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and argon divided by water and argon. And what you can see is when you write the expression for the reaction quotient, argon cancels out. So for the addition of argon gas, it doesn't change our expression for Q. And since there's no other changes being done, you still have the same amount of moles of carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and water, and the volume's also the same. Q is still equal to K, so our reaction is still at equilibrium, and there is no shift. So finally, the last stress, what if we were to increase the temperature? So if you were to increase the temperature, well, to answer this type of question, you have to be given more information. And that information is specifically, you need to know whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Does the reaction absorb heat or does it release heat? So we're gonna say in this situation that this reaction is exothermic. Delta H is negative. Now, what's the consequence of this? Well, what you should know is if delta H is negative, then you treat heat, which we denote by a delta sign, as a product. If your reaction is endothermic, then delta H is positive, and we're going to treat heat, denoted again by the delta symbol, as a reactant. So in this case, since our reaction is exothermic, again, we can rewrite our reaction. It would be water gas plus carbon solid gives us hydrogen gas, carbon monoxide, and heat as a product. So in this case, when you increase the temperature, that is equivalent to adding heat, all right? So we'll make a note here, increasing the temperature is the same as adding heat. Decreasing the temperature is the same as removing heat. So in this case, if you increase the temperature, you add heat, that's adding a product that would seemingly increase uh, the amount of products which means your reaction will shift to the left. So that indeed is the answer here. Our reaction is going to shift to the left. Now, one last thing you want to be a little careful of is that this last situation is a little bit different. In our cases of A and C, the reason why the reaction shift was because you changed the value of Q and Q was trying to get back to K. Here, when you change the temperature, that doesn't actually directly change the value of Q. But if you recall, the equilibrium constant, KEQ, is dependent on temperature. So when you change the temperature, you change the value of K. So essentially, Q is shifting to this new value of K. Okay. So this is Les Chatelier's principle, and again, try to keep in mind these different examples when you're encountering these types of problems on the MCAT.